Hi, I'm Robin with Robin's Re3. We're going to be using our new 9x7 mesh rail. And this rail allows you to change your sign for holidays, seasons, whatever you want to do. This is going to allow you just to pull the sign in and out. Now right now I have it secured here because I just glued it today. This is our prototype. The new one will have holes here for your cording, so don't worry about that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take an 18 inch piece of tinsel tie. And we're going to put, and these were cut at 10 inches, we're going to take our tinsel ties and put them every 2 inches on here. We're going to leave an overhang of about 4 inches on either side, because what I want to show you is I want to show you how you can design on this for this sign then when you remove it you'll be removing this which will have all the mesh and ribbon and everything attached to it and you can store this so the next time you use this sign you can put this back on. Now my plan is to um, show you how to do this on Thursday, I will be going live on uh, Higgy Ann's Facebook page, and I will show you how to take this off and create a whole new design on the same mesh, mesh rail using a different sign, okay? We're going to be using the blueberry sign that night. So, what you're going to need is you're going to need a hot glue gun. You're going to need five pieces of tinsel tie cut at about five, or uh, these are 10 inches, 10 inches, between 10 and 11 inches. And then you're going to need this 18 inch piece. So what we're going to do is every couple of inches, we're going to put a tie on here. This is just going to be like you have on your wreath bases, okay? So there we have one, so we're going to put another one at about two inches here. And all I'm doing is put a little spot of glue on here, pulling each side up and twisting it so it adheres to the glue. Because we want this to stay on here. We don't want it coming off, okay? So again, we're going to go another two inches. Now for this mesh rail, you only need five pieces of mesh. Now I usually do the ruffle method when I do this. Let me zoom you in a little so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. Okay. All we're doing is like creating like, um, like you would on a, a, a swag something like that. We're just creating a base that we can attach our mesh to and then lock it on to the wreath or to the rail and then take it off when we want to switch out the sign. That's all we're doing. Let me just make sure this is going to fit. Yes. Okay. So again, your bottom piece of tinsel tie, you could use pipe cleaners, but I personally prefer tinsel ties. They don't rust and break like the um, pipe cleaners do. So there we go. Now in each one of these sections is where we're going to put our mesh. But right now, we're going to take um, some zip ties and we're going to zip tie this to the frame. You're probably only going to need about three zip ties. Now see I have that part up top because I don't want it scratching the door. Then I'm going to secure another piece in the middle. 
and another piece on the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Then when I go to take this off, when I switch out the sign for the next season or holiday, all I have to do is remove the three zip ties and I can pull this off and store it. You could actually take it and store it hanging up like in a closet. A lot less space than a wreath. And right now with it being hard to get, the um, wreath bases and such, sometimes it's nice just to use something like this. Now, for a little extra holding power, I'm actually going to take this and wrap it around there. And if you felt it droops, we can do two more right here. So let's just say we're going to put five on here once, one in between each um, tinsel tie. That way we know it's secure, it's not going to go anywhere, especially in the middle because the middle is where your bow is going to be. This sign says I licked it so it's mine. It's a really cute ice cream sign that I have in my shop. I love cows. All right. Now, we're using the iridescent foil mesh, the 10 inch, and I've cut those at 18 inches. And we're just going to do the ruffle method. I always turn my ends down and then I just walk up the middle. And sometimes it's just helpful weighting the other end with something heavy. Now see this is a rail is a great item to use when you have leftover mesh. It does not require a whole roll. It just requires five pieces. You can add more on here. You could add curls to it if you wanted. I chose to use the lavender because I have lavender in the sign and I have lavender or purple in the, uh, the item I'm going to be placing on my wreath. A handmade uh, ice cream cone that matches the ice cream cone in the sign. So that's going to go in the middle. And then I have various ribbons. And I also have snowball mesh that I cut at 10 inches. You'd be surprised how full you can make these with just a couple pieces of mesh. And it's nice too for people that have storm doors because it doesn't take up as much space in between the doors as a regular wreath does. So there are positives to mesh rails. You're saving on ribbon, you're saving on mesh. You may pay a little more for your rail, but in the long run you're saving. And it's a great way, like I said, to use leftover mesh. Okay, now we got one more to put on. had a little bit of technical difficulties, so we're going to restart. Let me move the camera. There we go. 
All right, so we're working with the last piece of mesh. And we're just using the ruffle method. I also have some um, splatter mesh, whatever you call it. I cut this at, this one's at 15 inches. Now I'm just going to gather up the middle here. I thought this would be a nice contrast with the lavender. And I'm going to put it in every other tie. splatter mesh. So this mesh was cut at 18, the splatter mesh was cut at 15. I'm going to leave the middle one open because that's where our bow is going to go. So it would just be covered up. So there's no sense putting one in there. And one more on the end. Just a nice little pop of color there. There we go. Alright, I've chosen four colors of ribbon here. I thought this was pretty. This has like an iridescent shine to it. Kind of looks like sprinkles. And then there's this one that has all the colors of the sign in it. I thought this would look nice too. It's in here, it's in the sign, and we'll put it there. And then I also have this, this pink. So, I think we're going to go green and pink, and then that one, and end with that one. So, we're going to cut our, our uh, tails, ribbon tails now, and we only need two of each color. So I'm going to actually cut them at 12 inches. Um, yeah, 12. So two of each color. Put that aside. wonder what kind of ice cream everyone likes. There's a little bit of everything in here, in the sign. I'm going to straighten that off. So I want to go back and dovetail these. Now let's see. That looks good against that. And I think that looks kind of pretty against that one. So we'll work with those pairs. But let's go ahead and dovetail. Look at how much you're saving on ribbon, too. It doesn't take a whole lot for a rail.
and we'll alternate these in our ties. Just like you would on a wreath. Easy peasy. Okay. So these two together and these two together. All right. Um, let's start out with the pink. You've got dots in the sign, you've got mint, you've got strawberry, you've got chocolate. Am I making you hungry yet? And this is one, if you're new to wreathing and you're just starting out with your Etsy shop, okay, it's very simple to make, use this, wreath, use this rail, make a bunch of different ones, post them all on there, and if somebody orders that one, then you just put the, uh, the tinsel tie back on the, the frame of the mesh rail. In other words, you can use this over and over and over again and not have a lot tied up in inventory or, you know, you have to store all these. So it's nice to have everything, have a bunch made, but only have one base is what I'm saying. So there we go. I think what we'll do is we'll make our bow now. And a lot of times, if you've watched me before, I usually just use my bow dabber to hold all the ribbon in place for me. Now let's do, I'm going to do a 14 inch tail on this. And I think about a six inch loop. Now a lot of times when I'm doing this, I only do three loops and two tails. You don't have to have your tails exactly the same. Like I said, I'm just using this to hold it. What I end up doing is putting two loops on one side, one on the other side, and then my tails with the single loop. Again, a 14 inch tail, and I'm going to drop it down to about a five, five and a half inch loop. Just checking my loops to make sure they're even, creating my third loop. And 
in cutting my tail. Now because my loops are on this, I mean my tails are on this side, I'm going to put them on the opposite side this time. Now, go ahead with this one. Again, 14 inch. Now we're going to drop this down to about a 5. This is just an easy peasy bow to do. So we put the other two tails on this side. And we finish off with our sparkly. And we do this about a four inch. Now I'm going to take a piece of this because I'm going to zip tie this bow. Pulling out the wire because I want to zip tie this bow, but I also want to cover up the zip tie. So what I usually do is divide this into three sections, glue it, and then cover up the zip tie with it. Now I'm going to need a piece of tinsel tie because I want to attach it to the base. So. My tinsel tie or my zip tie on. Running the tinsel tie through the back before I tighten it. And then tightening it. Don't know my own strength. <laughs> Alright, we're going to dovetail our ends. Okay, we did those, but we need to do this one. take this piece and like I said we're gonna section it off in threes and try not to burn my hand all right and then I'm going to use this to cover up the zip tie in the middle it just finishes it off nicely. It just shows your customer you went the extra mile to make it look really good. Like covering up your mechanics. I'm going to hold this a minute. And then I'm going to put a little um, hot glue there and overlap. And then I'm going to trim the excess off. Actually makes for a nice pattern on the front. See that? All right. Now we're going to attach our bow, and then we're going to fluff out the bow, and then I think we're going to add some chocolate sauce to this. No, I'm not getting out the Hershey syrup. <laughs> you will see. All right. I want to get this down all the way to the bottom. Where is it? 
is it? There we go. So I'm taking it all the way to the back and I'm tying it in and then I'm gonna push these down because I'm gonna use that to untie my bow on Thursday night when I go live on Higgy Ann's Facebook page. Then we're gonna remove these zip ties and I'm gonna show you how to take this wreath or rail and create a whole nother design. All right, so I wanna change that that way. Now we wanna, we wanna fluff out our bow. Let's bring this down here. So we've got three loops here. So we're gonna kind of space them out evenly. I'm gonna shift that up some. And then we wanna bring this over. And bring this over. And bring this over. All I'm doing is just repositioning the loops. You could, if you wanted to, curl these up and choose to leave them down. yummy. It even has a cherry on the top. All right. There we go. Now, to finish it off, I think we're going to use a little of this brown um, tubing, mesh tubing, deco mesh tubing. This is going to resemble chocolate sauce. This gives it another element. I actually, when I made this, I actually added some to the top because the one cone in, in this looks like it's dripping chocolate so when I added that it kind of looked like dripping chocolate. Wouldn't this be cute for a little ice cream shop? And we could if we wanted to add some red pom-poms on here to look like cherries on the rest of the wreath or rail. I never do measure this. Let's see how it's 32 inches long. I just divide it evenly in my fingers so I kind of knew. I don't measure, I just <laughs> estimate. OK. 
have. So now that you saw it built from the bottom up, I'm sure you can visualize what it would look like when we take this apart. Because we would actually come back here, remove the ice cream cone, remove the bow, and then snip the um, zip ties, and everything would be on that one piece of tinsel tie. I think this is done drying. So there we go. There is our ice cream rail. This is in my Etsy shop. This is in my Etsy shop. I will leave a link. And there we go. We're done. So I hope you can join me on Thursday. It is 6 o'clock 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Central. Okay? And we're going to totally take this apart and then show you how to create, where'd I put it, our blueberry, our blueberry wreath rail. Okay, we're going to actually pull this sign out, slip this sign in, and we're going to do it up big. Okay, I thank